Hello there. This is going to be a walkthrough of the electric fields topic at A-level, mainly for AQA A-level physics, but applicable to any syllabus, really, within reason. So, um, and ideally it should follow on from the gravitational fields topic. I think uh, gravitational fields is a good topic to start with, the whole sort of area of fields. So uh, there's quite a lot of analogies here or between um, gravitational fields and electric fields. But one big difference, though, is that... Uh, Electric fields can be repulsive or attractive, or the electric forces can be repulsive and or attractive, and it's to do with charges as opposed to masses, as it was for um, gravitational fields. Like charges repel, and like charges attract. That's knowledge that most students have uh, from lower down schools, and it's worth repeating here though at this stage. And uh, also, and uh, it's worth emphasising that unlike includes the case where one object is uncharged. But sometimes that could come up. Charges measured in coulombs, named after Charles Augustin de Coulomb, and um, usually quite small numbers of coulombs, so a lot of standard form. Now, um, it's a bit more trivial with gravitational fields, but for electric fields, when you're doing the arrows on electric field lines, uh, just imagine test positive charge and the direction that would go. So electric fields are similar to gravitational fields, regions where an object experiences a force, uh, this time an electric force, and they can be represented again like gravitation, gravitational forces can with lines of force. So um, in this particular diagram here, there must be a um, positive charge to the left there somewhere uh, because the test positive charge is going to be moving to the right. Okay, or there could be a negative charge uh, on the right either, I suppose. But that's the convention that's used. So arrows there show the direction of the force on a positive charge. Uh, really important that. And again, the line density increases with the strength of the field. So um, we're talking about radial fields again, similar to what we did with gravitation. Um, and they exist around point charges. And the field around the uniform sphere is also radial. And so essentially, we consider everything to be a point charge. Um, but there's two different types of charge, already mentioned, positive and negative. So when there's a positive charge, the field lines uh, leave or extenuate outwards, extending outwards, and a field lines go into a negative charge, again, because of that convention earlier, because a positive charge would be attracted towards uh, the negative charge. So that's why the field lines are going in towards a negative charge. So some of the field patterns here. Whoops. Um, You've got two different uh, opposite charge points there. Now, there's some really good simulations. There's a website, Nora Gulfer, I think it's called. Nora Gulfer. I'll try and put a, a link, if I remember, in the description. It's really good to play around with uh, different patterns of fields, electric fields, and that's really good for visualization. Then you've got uh, a parallel plate there next to um, a negative charge. Quite an unusual situation, really, these days. And then you've got two positive charges, um, and you've got the resultant sort of field line structure there with a neutral point between them. So that's a little bit similar in some ways to gravitational fields, that particular setup there. Um, those two part charges must be the same magnitude because they've got the same number of field lines uh, emanating from them. And uh, yes, again, with this topic, the field line direction is really important to get correct. And then uh, this kind of leads on to the next topic, really, um, capacitors. But the field lines between parallel plates, in reality, they would look a bit like that. Although in most questions, you assume a uniform field, really. But there would be some bowing there on the edge, uh, on the edge of, end of the plates. Uh, but most problems consider the um, field to be uniform between the plates. So, you know, maybe that's not the best diagram at this stage. Maybe better to show it just straight lines because that's what comes up in the vast majority of questions. But that's a realistic picture there. Um, OK, on to field strength. So the electric field equivalent of little g from gravitational fields. Electric field strength, and helpfully given the symbol capital E, which stands for energy and uh, various other things. So it's equal to the force per unit charge, um, as opposed to force per unit mass for little uh, g in the previous topic. So. Um, just to remember, this is F equals EQ, but if you put E as a subject, E is F over Q. And again, there's conventions here. You can, I prefer capital Q and lowercase Q, but it's up to you. You could do Q1, Q2 as well. 
and the unit uh, and this is a vector quantity like the force will be as well um, the unit is newtons per coulomb and uh, again the direction is the same as the force on a positive charge again so that's that convention so Coulomb's law, you can think of it as the equivalent, uh, the electric field equivalent of Newton's law of gravitation. Now I find quite often the students forget this. Um, I think they're more likely to remember Newton's law of gravitation, but Coulomb's law is exactly the same structure, really, okay, but charges instead of masses. So the force between two point charges directly proportional to the product of the charges. Remember that product is the thing that people quite often forget to write down. They say proportional to the charges and they'll lose a mark there. Inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. Again, the square sometimes is missing from uh, an answer or inversely. Third point's true, but isn't really needed. Certainly for AQA for a mark, it's usually worth two two marks. That um, so Coulomb's law there. This is going to lead to an equation which is of a similar structure to the force gravitational force equation. So again, we they're using here Q1, Q2 as, as the nomenclature, but uh, if the force is proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance apart, then you get that, and uh, you can insert a constant, and then you get an equation. So this constant, uh, historically, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. The whole constant itself is roughly 8.99 times 10 to the 9, which is useful in classwork, I think. But in exams, I'd probably write the whole thing out uh, using the epsilon naught value from the formula booklet. Epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space, and the value of that, uh, I think that's the same in the formula booklet now, currently 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and uh, there's the units there. So, um, the permittivity of air is usually taken to be the same as vacuum, then, and um, other things would be higher than other media. And the unit is the farad per meter, but uh, at this stage, the students haven't come across the farad as a unit. Um, so that's um, probably worth you know glossing over. You can use the unit that's given there, um, just above. But yeah, come more commonly farads per meter. But we come onto that later on. So uh, useful to get students to work out the force of attraction between a proton and an electron, and uh, get a feel for the numbers. So you can see there it's that that whole constant. Sometimes it's helpful to start off just calling the constant k. To be honest, I think. Um, the whole thing, because it can get a little bit uh, confusing having the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, but uh, different ways of doing it. And um, that comes out to be quite a small number, okay, 10 to the minus 8. And uh, it's a negative sign because it's an attractive force. Now, you know, this is where, if you've seen the video about gravitational fields, AQA don't use the same convention as OCR about having negative signs for of course all the gravitational stuff is attractive but uh, the forces don't are not negative okay so that's a bit of an issue really i think in, in the course but uh, negative in electric fields means attractive and positive answer would be mean repulsive okay um yes yeah, so the whole of that co constant can sometimes just be called k especially when you're doing algebraic manipulation or equating things equations together you can often just use k and the k's might cancel for instance um so there's the equation looks a little bit simpler written in that form so um, if you compare the gravitational force between an electron and a pro uh, proton compared to the previous answer for the electric force you get an answer of 10 to the minus 47 really tiny for the gravitational force between those particles so the ratio is you know roughly between those two forces is 10 to the 39 difference so gravitational attraction is insignificant at the atomic level. So this is sort of it helps explain why we don't consider gravity when we're teaching particle physics or studying particle physics, because it's insignificant at that level. And uh, similar to gravitational fields here, we find a, a radial relationship for field strength by substituting in form from Coulomb's law. So uh, if you substitute Coulomb's law in there, now you've got two Qs. Um, that cancel two lowercase q's there and um, you're left then with it, something that's uh, is it, again this is another way of writing it you can either say field strength is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared or you can group everything together and it'd be q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared or you could say it's kq over r squared whichever 
thing works for you, really. Increasingly these days, I'm using K as a teacher. I think you know once I've got the students know that it's one over four perhaps not all, but I think it's easier, um, especially if things end up end up cancelling. So you can work out some field strengths at various distances, and uh, so this is the field strength uh, where a question where you can get a positive and a negative answer there. Again, the positive would be uh, repulsion and negative being attraction. Lots of the exam questions that come up on electric fields are, have geometry in them, squares, triangles and things like that, that, such that sometimes there's quite a lot of charges, but some of them cancel out in the question. So it becomes a bit more trivial, um, whereas gravitational fields is usually just two objects that we're considering. So just always have, when you're doing questions on um, electric fields, try and look for which charges are the important ones and which are the ones that cancel out their contribution anyway. Just got to be careful what, whether you're talking about force, field strength or potential. So um, absolute attack, we don't have to have the word absolute, but absolute electric potential then is defined as the work done per unit charge, positive charge brought from infinity to the point. So um, it's exactly the same as in sort of setup really as gravitational fields, the electric potential is defined at uh, infinity is zero. Um, and all those points are quite useful to know. Points around positive charges are usually, but not always, positive potentials and vice versa. And electric potential is measured in joules per coulomb. But we know if you look at the what that is, joules per coulomb in terms of uh, physics units, then it's volts essentially. So uh, this is you know this is when you're doing delta v, that's the potential difference or the voltage. Electric potential, as with gravitational potential, is a scalar quantity. And uh, we're looking at equipotentials this time for um, electric fields. Again, similar to gravitational fields, or the same. Uh, they're surfaces that join up points of equal potential, and no work is done by an electric force when it's moved. Uh, a charge is moved along the equipotential surface. Um, and the, again, really important, especially if you've got to draw uh, either the equipotential lines or the field lines. The equipotential lines are always perpendicular to the field lines. So you've got graphs here of the variation of both field strength and potential about a positive charge. So one of those is 1 over R squared, the field strength, and the potential relationship is 1 over R. Graphs you should be familiar with. Now potential difference then, uh, when charge Q is moved through electric potential difference delta V, the work done given by work done equals Q delta V. Really, that's the electric potential energy, really, of the system. And uh, similarly, exactly the same as little g's uh, feature in the gravitational fields topic. The potential gradient in a uniform field, dv by d, dv by dd, is um, equal to the field strength, the electric field strength. Or E equals V over d, essentially, especially when you're doing capacitance questions. And the units for that are joules per coulomb per meter, which is volts per meter. So that is your uh, electric field strength. So again, same the same case as gravitational fields. For electric fields, the field strength, there are a few different equations. You can use three, essentially. This one is used quite often. This one is used, I think, far more often than the little g equation involved in potential. So measured in volts per meter. And there we've got a picture of um, capacitance plates there. Now, one thing that students often struggle with is, uh, and it's sometimes the examiners try and trip you up on this in questions, is uh, they say, what's E, uh, the field strength at various positions between the plates in a uniform field? Well, it's the same everywhere. And it's just got to try and keep remembering that, that the field strength is the same everywhere in a uniform field. Um, so you get arguments where they, they move, you know, they, they move a sensor, somewhere between the plates and there's usually a factor of two involved and they want you to trip up there so the field strength here is the same as the field strength there 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 there, there anywhere yeah quite a common thing to try and be tripped up on and uh, 
like gravitational fields, the area underneath uh, field strength um, distance graph is going to be equal to the potential. Similar graph in the, uh, in the gravitational fields notes. And finally then, um, sometimes you can be lucky. I think um, you'd be lucky to get as a student to get this kind of question. Um, a sort of QWC, they used to call it questions, five, four, five, six marker to, to compare the similarities and differences uh, of both electric and gravitational fields. So they're both inverse square laws, both long range uh, compared with the uh, nuclear forces. Um, the definitions have all got the same structure. Differences, though, um, obviously one is to do with charge, the other is to do with mass. There's the gravitational field uh, force is always attractive, but ch charge uh, electric fields can be repulsive or attractive. And then that bit about the vacuum being a maximum electric force for electric fields. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the constants are such a, an order of magnitude uh, in difference sizes. You've got 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 and 9 times 10 to the 9, you know, 10 to the 20 difference between them. Huge difference. Now there's some extra little bits here. This slide um, shows you the parabolic uh, path that electrons um, follow if they come into a situation there at right angles to a field. So um, this uh, little slide is just showing you that they, they you know, that they, they follow a para parabolic, a parabolic um, trajectory. That's the word I was trying to look for. Um, whereas in a magnetic field, charges will go in a circle. So um, really need to drill students with that Nick, because it comes up in questions quite a lot as a mark about describing the path and drawing the path sometimes things for things like mass spectrometers those kind of questions um, so a parabolic path and uh, for electric fields and a circular path for magnetic fields and it's proved sort of on this where it comes from so it's quite a nice little thing to read and in terms of exam questions a uh, lots of exam questions involve information or useful knowledge from mechanics so you get a lot of these kind of uh, uh, polystyrene ball on a on a on a on a piece of string and then an electric field being exposed to that so you've got tension in the spring no, in the sorry in the string and then electric force and weight mg being involved so uh, lots of questions need to be done on that because they come up quite quite often uh, in the aqa course over the years and in other boards I think that pretty much covers the whole of electric fields, but then it is only part of the story because the next topic is capacitors, which um, follows directly on and could just be thought of as a subset of this topic. So uh, the next video I'll do will be on that. Hope you found that useful. Bye.